Um, I met Katrina um, at Instant Thunder. Uh, she, you know, she's been our, and with us for a while, but I met her really for the first time um, and talked to her at Instant Thunder. I, I just love talking to her because she just talked about how she became SEAL Team and what she did and how she didn't think she could do it, but she just decided to. And so, uh, Katrina, I want you to, I really want, I want you to talk to the people, <laughs> talk to my people. Talk to that, the people. Yeah, talk to my people that are, are discouraged, my people that are not dialing like they should be dialing, my people that are, um, I want you to talk first your story, how you got in. I want you to talk about how you made the decision to go from where you were to where you are. Um, just kind of your process along the way and how and why you're killing it now. So if you can do that, I'll mute out because I know there's some people are probably getting some uh, echoing. But, um, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, was, I was hired on by Mickey Cruz, um, who's direct to Mike and Noel. And Mickey, the, the way I met Mickey is he came to my house to talk to me about mortgage protection. Um, I, had, I had just bought a new house, and we were, we were trying, to, trying to see if we could get that accomplished. Um, and we met with Mickey several times. Um, Mickey, actually, we didn't end up buying a policy from Mickey. Um, and, I, and I'll, I'll explain why I'm telling you that in a minute. Um, but Mickey did make a really great impression on us. Um, I, I lost my job probably about five months later. You know, I thought I had a great job. I was excited about it. And suddenly it was not there anymore. Um, and uh, frankly, it's a horrible feeling. You know, it is to me. And I, I know other people have experienced that. It's just, it's just awful to suddenly, you know, be working really hard and, and be without a job. So I looked around for another position in um, auto claims, liability claims is what I was doing for 16 years, really. I was looking for another position doing that, and I probably looked for another position for a straight two weeks. And then it occurred to me that maybe it was a good idea to try something totally different. I said, okay, well, maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way, and maybe I should not be doing auto claims anymore or liability claims. Just maybe, maybe not. So I, I started looking in different areas. I started looking in sales. I had done that briefly straight out of college. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to people and hanging around people. So I thought maybe it was a little bit better place to go. And my husband, after I talked to him a little bit about that and I explained what I was looking at, he said, well, why don't you call Mickey? Isn't that what Mickey does? And, of course, we hadn't talked to Mickey probably at that point in four months because that was – late November when he said that Mickey was at our house in June the first time. So I said, well, okay. So I did. And But before I knew it, um, I was being fast-tracked, and I didn't even know what fast-tracked was. I was just trying to – I said, well, you, you know, what do I have to lose? I don't have anything to lose. I don't have a job. I mean, might as well try something. If I hate it, then, well, at least I tried. So I, I started going to the meetings, and my husband got excited about it because he said, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is something that that's really could be good for us. Give it a year. We have some, you know, thankfully we had a little bit of a savings, which was good just in case I completely stunk. Give it a year, and then we'll reevaluate afterwards. So we just went hard at it um, from the beginning. I think I, I didn't put as much effort as I could into it. I would, I would run, and I went through my activity book for 2015. I would run between 8 and 12 appointments. Sometimes it was 12 or 13. Sometimes it was 10. Sometimes it was 8. 
all the way up through October. That's what I did. And and I was I was doing okay. I, mean, I was really I, I was averaging about 15,000 issue paid a month and I guess I was being lazy. Um I don't everybody has a different definition of lazy, but I wasn't doing what I could. I was hanging around a lot in the car and not doing as many appointments as I could fit in. So we got on a call in no in in late October with Andy. Uh, Mike Levantovich texted me and Mickey texted me, hey, get on this call. You need to be on this call. You need to be on this call. I said, okay. I didn't really want to be on the call. It was Sunday night, and I was going to run appointments on Monday, and I really just wanted to spend some time with my family. But... They said it was important, so that's what I did. And that's when Andy started talking about field team. And I don't know, Alex, if you if you know what I mean, just like I felt convicted. You know, like when, when we were in church and, and we were little and it was like, you know, come forward and if you feel like you've been feeling this or this or this, and, you know, sometimes I would feel convicted and I would go forward. That's the way I felt. When when Andy was talking about SEAL Team, it was just like, you know what, Katrina, you're not doing everything you can do. So what I decided um, was that I said, okay, Andy, I'm in. I'll, I'll do it. I'll see what I can do. You know, and at that point in time, he was really focusing and, and still is 20 appointments, 20 appointments, 20 appointments. Um. So I, I was scared to death. I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to make 20 appointments and at one point, at one time, you know. I, I've never, I had never done that before. I was happy making my 8 to 12, and it was really a stretch for me to think, oh, gosh, 20. Like, do I even have enough leads for that? I was freaking out. I was calling Noel, Noel, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared. I don't know how to do this. I really don't want to work this hard. I don't want to work this hard. Um, but I committed to doing it, so I did. And I realized that putting in the extra effort on my part, it, it, it more than paid back. It wasn't just a little extra for me. It was a lot extra. You know, so I, you know, it takes my issue paid and my numbers, my written business is close to 30 every month because, of course, not everything gets issued. And, um, and I'm issuing over 20, and I'm making a lot more money. I'm building a team, and, uh, and all the while I realized Andy has tricked me into doing it because, you know, we'll work for shooting guns and, going on trips and, you know, going down and having nice dinners with Andy and, and, and the other leaders. Like, I'll, I'll, I'm in. I want to do that stuff. And I like, I like that he is tricking us into work and, and then giving us extra opportunities to have fun just for doing what we need to be doing. I mean, it's pretty darn cool. Um, but that, that being said, that's just kind of a little bit of the background. I think... For me, the main thing and what Andy says is what you focus on and what you think about is, is who you are and what you do. So that's my focus. I need to issue pay at least $20,000. I need to bring on contract people and get people started and get people working on my team. So I'm focused on that, and because I'm focused on that is what's allowing me to achieve any little bit of it. Um, not every month is easy to do. I'm, I'm working a lot harder than I ever was, and sometimes if I have to run extra appointments, I have to run extra appointments, but I do what I need to do in order to hit those numbers. So, um, so tell me what, because, you know, doing 15000 a month ain't bad either, but... What? No, the, no, no, what? no. <laughs> so, like, it was more of a leap of faith that doing the extra investment in time, because it was a money investment, too, to get enough leads to run 20 a week, right? Right. right. So what, what, month, what weekly investment did you go from 
And then what did you go to in order to get to kind of make that transition? Uh, probably, I would say with averages, like three to five hundred. I started at eight hundred. I went up to five hundred. All right. Okay, so 300 to 500, and then what happened was you kind of really more, you more multiplied your results more than like a direct, like percentage increase. So like the increase in leads um, gave you more of a percentage increase in production, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy how that works. <laughs> I've always said that, that the, the incremental increase is always going to produce more. And, um, and that's cool. So... Give us a rundown on, like, what is your lead mix? What was your lead mix before, and what is your lead mix now? My lead mix has not changed. Um, I take every kind of lead that there is. I do not discriminate. So when you say every kind of lead, this includes direct mail mortgage, final expense, Yes, 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 and yes. And final and expense, mortgage, A leads, A one, two A, three A, three work, three work two. And R twos. I love it. So your lead mix of three hundred going up to five hundred is just a mixture of all these type of leads and then you just pound the phone. How many dollars do you think you average before at, at, you know, when you were doing it before SEAL team and then post SEAL team? Uh, oh, <laughs> you're going to laugh at me, Alex. Probably 75 to 80 before. Okay. Uh, right now I'm closer to 150. <laughs> Jeez, you know, Katrina, if I could get every agent to at least do 150 dials. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's a start. It is a start. So, like, if you had to break down, like, in a typical week, could that three to five hundred be like, you know, five A leads and you know, fifteen other of the other type of leads or something like that? Or you don't really track that. Um, I do, but it's changed recently because of Mickey. Mickey has taken lead responsibility now for his organization, so things have morphed a little bit, and I'm getting a lot more of the multi-A's than I was in the rework. Okay. Um, what, what, do you, did you have any kind of feeling for what it, kind of what it, what had it been for the last few months? Like, was the A leads 30% of your weekly distribution, 50%, 20%, any feeling for that? I would say probably 40%. Okay, 40%. That's cool. Now, just so people understand, what sales thing that you did before, um, you said you were right out of college. What, what, what did you do right out of college? I sold car insurance for GEICO over the phone. Seriously? Yep. Now, how long did you do that for? I did that for two and a half years while I was finishing college. Wow. So you're, you're probably really good on the phone. I mean, like, when you joined us, you probably got to be real good on the phone because of that. Yes. Yeah. But Yeah, I did. Well, I did that, and then my claim job was a telephone. Okay. So everything I've done in my career has been over the phone. <laughs> That's cool. All right, um, Yuval, can you text me back? Can you hear echoing? Is there any echoing? Um, I got a question. Oh, there's echoing. Okay, so do you do door knocking too as well? I do. Um, I think if you mute while I'm talking, it won't echo, Alex. Um, I do door knocks, but I use door knocks as filler. 
work. So if I have a if I have a couple of no shows or something like that's going on, then then I'll have door knocks that I'll do. Um, but that's primarily not my focus because I if you're booking twenty appointments, you're probably going to be running behind on one or two, and you're probably going to need to go straight to your other appointment even if you do get a no show. So I have a little bit less time to door knock than I did before when I was running those eight appointments or ten appointments. Okay, that's cool. Um, can you, like, see my text? See, if I text you, can you talk and read my text at the same time? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, my schedule. Um, what I run right now, and I've, I've not changed this, so that will give you a little bit of an indication, too. Uh, Mickey was running appointments Monday, Tuesday, and half a day Wednesday, um, dialing Saturday. So I started out this, running the same schedule as Mickey, dialing Saturday morning. I have a backup dial session on Sundays uh, in the evening if I need it. And then I'll run all day between 8, 8 to 10 p.m. Monday and Tuesday. And then I'll run a half day Wednesday because we have hot spots on Wednesday night. So I want to make sure that I'm getting the hot spot on time. Um, and then my recruiting activity is on Thursday and Friday. Sometimes I'll talk to people and follow up with them if they're interested on Saturday afternoon. But that's that's my schedule. And the big thing about my schedule is that I I really stick to it. Once I have a schedule, that's what I'm doing, without a doubt. I don't do anything that's. I mean, if I'm running appointments, I'm running appointments. I don't I don't get distracted on those days, especially on those days. And every every week, I'm still looking at booking 20 appointments. Um, depending on how my week's panning out, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately, and been been working been working with uh, with Mike and Noel, and you know doing doing our getting some new hot spots going. So I've I've been doing a lot of that. But 20 appointments, I still, without a doubt, will book between 15 and 20 every single week. Um, I get as close to 20 as I can because the more opportunities, the, the better. I want to make sure that I'm seeing as many people as I can. Um, referrals in the home are a big part of that. Um, I talk to people that I, that I don't have to buy a lead on. It saves me a lot of money. And it's a lot better sale. So I'm, I'm talking to people's family members and taking care of them where I can. Um, you know, I, I bought some new furniture the other day, and I'm, I'm working on a policy for my sales lady <laughs> for my couch. And I'm, I'm going to try to hire her, too. So I, I'm just talking to as many people as possible. If they have something, if they don't have something, I'm trying to sit down with them and see if I can help them. So of, the, um, so of your production every month, what percentage of that do you think comes from referral sales? I would say about 25% of my production right now. That rocks. Um, that's not, it's not as high as I want it to be because I would love my lead bill to go down for sure. Um, but I'm working on that. Leads are great. I love them. How far do you have to travel from where you live to go run your um, appointments? Uh, I typically run appointments and uh, between an hour and an hour and a half away from my house. But once I get there, to be clear, I don't, I'm not going to drive an hour and a half and then, you know, run a couple of appointments and then go home and then drive back another hour and a half. I'm going to book the entire day in that area. And the only time I'm going to go home is when I'm done for the night, which most of the time I don't get home till 11 or 11.30 on average on Monday and Tuesday. 
because I'm really running all day. That takes a lot of scheduled discipline to stay out there and to really get people to, to book them into your calendar, right? Yes. Yeah, it does. And, but once you practice a little bit on the phone, I mean, it's, I mean, this is what I have available. This is what I have available. I mean, the whole, what we're doing, whether we're on the phone trying to book people, and it's not always easy, or whether we're in the home, is we're trying to get them where we want them to go without them realizing it. What we know is best for them, and that's what that's what we're that's what we're hurting them towards. So it's as I said, I, I feel like a herder. You know, you get you get the group together as much as possible, and then um, you know you're you narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down until so you're they're exactly where you want them to be. And I think that that's what we do, obviously with their best interest in, in mind, but that's what we do. So you've got to direct them and you give them, you give them those options and you keep it within those parameters. So take us back to when you first got started. We've got uh, a bunch of new people on this call who hadn't, hadn't even started dialing yet. Um, you obviously you ramped up to getting to where you're doing an average fifteen thousand a month. Um, talk about how you got started and the things you overcame, kind of mentally to kind of get into the groove. Like what little things happened for you to go from square one, getting your getting contracted and licensed, and then getting out there. Tell us about that process, just so the new people can maybe understand what that's about and how you know, you kind of handled it mentally and emotionally. Okay. Well, I can, I can say, first of all, um, I'm a mess. I still am. I just know a little bit more, a little bit more about what I'm doing than I did. Um, but I had no idea what I was doing. Like I said, I was being fast-tracked, and I don't even know what that was. I was being started, and I didn't even know I was starting. I was just, it was a whirlwind. So when I got started, you know, as soon as I got my license, Mickey says, ooh, I want you to listen to this guy dial. Ooh, 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 he's really great. So I go listen to Dane Levine dial, um, which was an awesome opportunity because he was right, right down the road, and I, I like to watch somebody and listen to them live dial. And then, you know, the next day, it's, let's get some leads. You're dialing. Um, and... I had no idea. He put a script in front of me, and I, I just dialed, um, and I was scared to death. And you should have seen me before my first appointment. I was absolutely terrified. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't learn about any products before I went into my first house. True story. No clue. None whatsoever. All I had was my ATM. And I didn't even get through it in my first house before they were like, sorry, we're not interested, goodbye. Talk about traumatic. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, these people are not nice. I don't know if I can do this. And Mickey just kept giving me instruction. Okay, I want you to knock on these doors. I'll map this out for you. These are the leads that you have. Knock on these doors. So Katrina scared to death Gustin went and knocked on doors. My first, my first time out in the field, I went and knocked on doors. Um, but what I did was follow directions. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, and I just had faith that I knew Mickey would, would help point me in the right direction. Um, so when I did actually sit down with somebody and I was able to stay through my whole presentation, as soon as I got to, you know, past, past the page where we're finding out about them and, and their situation, I called Mickey. That's all I did. I didn't know what product. I didn't know who to write or how to write. I just made a phone call, and I said, hey, you know, I'm here with so-and-so and so, and he even coached me on how to say that, you know, uh, mortgage protection, final expense, like, what are we looking at? And um, I have an idea of what could help you. 
Um, but I'm going to check. I'm going to check with my field underwriter, or I'm going to check with my manager, and just make sure we're on the same page. And then I picked up the phone, and he said, you know, sometimes he would he would close the deal for me. Sometimes he would tell me what to write. It just depended on the situation. Um, but that that's how I was able to write my first pieces of business. I, he told me specifically what to do, and I followed directions. I just went out and did it, and I ran the appointments that he wanted me to run. And um, I, I closed I closed two deals in my first week out in the field. I don't I don't remember what day it was if it was my first day or or if it was my second day, but I but I closed a couple of my first my first week, and it it really um it really made a difference because I was just following directions. I can't, I can't, I cannot stress that enough. There are people here who know how to do this. They've been doing it. And no matter how much experience I had, I didn't know what I was doing. So um, my, my issue paid, believe it or not, I think in January, which was my first full month working, was 13000 Um as far as my lead investment, I knew that there was a lead investment. I was never told, hey, this is free, which is helpful. And, um, but I, I, was good, I was good with that. I said, okay, I'll put in $200. So Mickey matched me. So my first, my first week out, I had $400 worth of leads to go on. And when you pair, when you pair an investment like that with yourself, and following directions and, you know, really working with somebody who's got your back, um, you get results. And you just got to be nice to people. I mean, and that's, that's what I did, and um, that's what I still try to do. Um, but, I mean, the biggest thing to me is I, don't ever stop picking up the phone and asking. Don't ever get to a point where you think that you know exactly what you're doing because, you don't always know. I don't always know. And I don't think I'll ever get to a place where I do always know. If I do, then, you know, what's the Bible say? Pride cometh before the fall. You know, you know don't do that. <laughs> Just keep calling. Just keep calling. Just keep calling. You know, it, awesome. it'll make you a lot more money. I love it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute the line, and I'm going to mute, because I think echo comes when I'm, un when I'm unmuted. So I'm going to open up the line, and if you've got background noise, if you can mute yourself. Um, but I'm going to open this up for questions. I hope you all can just, I don't care if you're brand new, I don't care if you're experienced, don't be scared, and um, let's ask Katrina some questions. So I'm going to mute, unmute everyone, and I'll mute myself. Hi, Katrina. Hi. Hey, I have a question. This is Paul Manius. Um, what when oh, you're dialing on? Uh, sorry, when when you're dialing on Saturday, um, what does your what does your schedule look like? How long are you dialing for? Uh, when do you get started? Do you take certain breaks or break it up in a certain way? I start at eight a.m. Um, on my schedule, it's until twelve. If I am, if I'm not satisfied with the number of appointments I have at 12 o'clock, I I like to keep dialing. I would rather get it all done with on Saturday than than back up on Sunday. So I'll keep dialing as long as I as long as I have leads to uh, to get my appointments set before I get out of the office. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Katrina, can you do me a favor? I want to hear your um, phone script. Um, Paul, can you role-play with her? Uh, I want to hear your phone script on um, just your phone script and maybe how you handle some objections. I want people to hear it. Okay. Give me a second and let me dig something up. Believe it or not, I still have my phone script in front of me when I dial even... Um, even when I dial now, it helps keep me focused. 
because I'm a little ADD. So, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Actually, you say ring, ring, and then I say hello. Ring, ring. Uh, hello? Hey, Paul. Yeah? Hey, Paul, this is Katrina Gustin. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing okay. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Hey, I was just giving you a call back. I'm your caseworker for the mortgage protection firm here in Orlando. And I had gotten a request that you sent in to us for some information regarding mortgage protection. You remember that? Um, I don't. I don't think I remember that. What, what okay, was this about? That's fine. Well, it's, it's no big deal. Um, I don't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, so don't don't worry about it at all. Basically, it uh, it's it's a paper that you filled out. It's got you and your wife's information on it. Uh, let me just make sure this is the right call. Um, your birthday is January nineteenth, nineteen seventy five. Is that you? Well, thank you for thinking I'm five years younger. But no, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome, awesome. Well, I just have got some information that I want to bring out to you. Everything looks good on our end, and I'm wanting to make sure that I'm just getting it out to you and not to your neighbor, all right? Uh, are you guys still at 123 Main Street? Uh, yes, we are. And that's here in Orlando, right? Um, yep, Orlando. And your wife's Maria? Yes, she is. She's a couple of years younger than you, right? Um, yep. Okay, cool. Well, Paul, it's typically morning or later in the afternoon. Better for me to swing by real quick and get this information to you and explain it. Okay. Um, which day is this? I'll be there either Monday or Tuesday. Okay, Monday. Um, Monday, we're both home. Okay, you home. Is it better for me to come by in the morning or in the in the afternoon or evening? Probably morning. Okay. Um, now, when you say morning, you think like eight o'clock sharp or like ten? Give you a little time for some coffee. Um, I would. Yeah, eight o'clock's too early. Get my daughter to school, so. Um, Ten o'clock is definitely better. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I've got I've got a ten o'clock. Uh, well, I'll tell you between ten or ten thirty, I'll be there just depending on traffic. I drive an electric blue Ford Explorer, so you cannot miss me when I come up. Just don't stick any dogs on me or anything crazy like that, okay? Okay, our dog's really friendly. He's a black lab. Awesome. I love dogs. Cool. And hey, do you have um do you have a pen and a piece of paper? I want to give you a reference number, so you can check me out. Make sure that it's me coming by. Sure. Okay, you ready? Mhm. Mm it's eight two eight seven one five one. Eight two eight seven one five one. Okay. All right. So make sure you tell Maria I'm coming by. Okay, I don't want to surprise her too much. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I got to remember to talk. Okay, sure. Thanks, Paul. Have a great day. I'll see you on Monday. All right. See you then. All right. Bye. Okay, that was very straightforward. I love it. So tell us, like, what are your top, like, three objections that you get, and how do you handle them? I think probably the top one is I'm not interested or I'm not interested anymore. Um, and all the objections that I handle are essentially the same thing. That's cool. It's not a problem. It makes my job a heck of a lot easier. When we get these requests in the mail, we're just required to make sure that we get the information out to you. And then I proceed to ask the question again, morning or afternoon. Okay, that's awesome. So tell us, what are your keys to having a high show rate? So, like, what is your um, your show rate percentage? 
if I could be exact on that, that would be great. Um, it's kind of sporadic, to be honest. You know, this this week I had every one show but two out of 19. Um, the week before that was a lot different, you know. I, I probably had six or seven no-shows. Um, it, it's, you know, from week to week, I, it's pretty, um, it's pretty sporadic. It, it never goes higher than about 40% or 50%. Um, but that's on a real bad week. Yeah, like you know, no show rate. So, isn't it, is your mindset different when you know you have 20 appointments booked versus having 10 appointments booked in terms of getting no show? Absolutely. I feel a lot better when I know that I have that I have more appointments to go. Um, and just like when you get in a house and, and you try everything you can and you just cannot help them. You know, if I have if I know I have fifteen other appointments, I'm not in freak out mode because I've got other people I can go see. And I know I'm gonna be able to help somebody out of those next 15 appointments. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling as stressed and, and as, you know, desperate to sell somebody something. I know I have more opportunities, uh, and that makes a huge difference. If I've only got two appointments left and, you know, my entire week was eight and I haven't sold anything yet, I'm feeling a lot of pressure at that point in time. It's a lot more mentally straining. So what I'm hearing is that if you put the hard work in and dial on the phone, um, everything else becomes way easier the rest of the week. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I've got a cup of coffee in front of me, and I'm wearing my yoga pants, and I'm relaxed when I'm dialing. I mean, so it, I guess if you call it hard, you know, it's frustrating to get objections and it's frustrating when you don't get people on the phone, but it's the easiest hard work I've ever done. Really. Yeah. That's the grinding part, isn't it? In your yoga pants, dialing the phone, you know, you're not on a roof in the middle of July roofing somebody's roof, you know? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my feet up, and sometimes Mickey's dog's on my lap, and, and I'm, I'm just relaxed. You be about All right, any other questions out there? Hey, Susan, Hi. And I was wondering about how many appointments per day. So you're booking about 20 a week, but how many appointments per day? Are you doing like 10 a day? And if so, how far apart are you scheduling them? Um, the most I will book in a day is eight normally, I would say. And I schedule mine an hour and a half apart. And do you get the fudge time? Do you tell them, is it okay if I show up half hour early or half hour late? Do you do the fudge time thing? I give them an hour window. Um, anytime I have not given somebody an hour window, it bites me in the butt. Because it's inevitable that I'm going to be running late. So when you say an hour window, how are you giving them that hour? You're going to tell them, I'm going to be there between 9 and 10, or how do you give them the hour window? Well, basically, I'll tell him, you know, like I told him, you know, at, at around 10 o'clock. Okay, and so so give me, and so once he agrees to that, because I want the agreement at first, I'll say, you know, give me between 10 and 11. Sometimes I get held up in appointments, and Orlando tra traffic is crazy. So give me a little leeway. I will be there. I don't really give them an option, but that's uh -huh. after I've already set the appointment and got their agreement. I love that. I love how you did that. That that was such an easy, assumptive close on telling them that you could be, you know, within that hour. Yep. 
Any other questions? I'm just trying to make it simple for them. I think that's key. Any other questions? Come on, you've got a SEAL team, 20 person on the call. Hi, Alex. This is Itzel. Um, and I haven't started, guys, but I'm super excited. Um, and I have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm still working, so, um, and I haven't gotten leads and all that, but... Um, when I get leads and I start calling, can what's your suggestion for someone that is going to be starting from scratch um, to get, you know, to be able to do this like full time, go right away into full time if you have a job, if that makes sense. Um, Alex, Alex may disagree. I don't know. Most of the time what I would say is, you know, if you have a job, that's it's not a bad thing. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't necessarily stop my job without serious consideration and serious discussion with my upline. I agree. Ever. Um, I was put into the situation because I kind of got fired. Um, and I had to make it work, and, and thank God the, the door was open for me, and, and that was really where I was supposed to be going, um, so that it worked out in that way that, you know, I, I, I was walking into something that, you know, I was supposed to be doing. Um, for somebody who's starting out who has a job, um, I, I typically wouldn't say, oh, yes, quit your job. No, maybe not so much. Um, I wouldn't do it. And, and when I did consider it, I would be like, Alex, what do you think about this? Or, you know, in my case, Mickey, Mike, Alex, Andy, what should I do here? Because everybody's situation is different, uh, and it depends on what your responsibilities are and, and how well you're doing and how much money you need to make, and there's a bunch of variables. So, yeah, you've got to talk to somebody about that for sure. Part -time Did that help? So, Katrina, on a part-time schedule, they still can do the same schedule. They just book their appointments on Monday night and Tuesday night, right? Right. They could do the same schedule, or they could, they could you know, book appointments Friday night or Friday morning before they go to work or Friday during lunch break and run Saturday and Sunday full days if they wanted to. Um, if they're off Saturday and Sunday, for instance, I mean, you can you can work it in on the times that you're off. If if this is something you really want to do, um, you just got to set a, set a schedule that's going to work for you every single week, as much as possible. So, how, Katrina, how do you get over the low times where you're not feeling very good about your performance, about yourself, about maybe distractions or family things going on or life things going on. What do you do to keep your mind right to continue to perform and do the thing you don't feel like doing? Well, first, first thing is my schedule is there regardless of how I feel. I book my appointments. I'm going to run my appointments. It doesn't matter how I feel unless somebody puts me in the hospital for something serious. I am running, I'm running appointments. I'm dialing. I'm doing what I have to do. Um, I have people, though, that I call or I text or I call and text, like, emergency, emergency. I feel like crud. You know, help me. Help me get my mind right. Help me. Let me know that I can do this. Help me remember that I'm, I'm okay at this. Um, and I talk, to, I talk to people all the time in that case, all the time. Because it's, it's never as perfect as you want it to be. I, mean, I have extremely high expectations for myself. And when I don't meet those expectations, I tend to get really mad. Um, and so at some point during the week, during most weeks, I, I have a moment or 10 where I'm pretty upset. Um, and that's just me. But I don't, I don't, 
I'm not alone being upset if I ever am. If something happens and I'm bothered or I'm unhappy with what I'm doing or what I've accomplished, I'm, there's, I'm not alone at that point in time. I'm talking to people. And it depends on, it depends on the situation as to who I'm talking to. Sometimes I need Noel. Sometimes I'll call my running buddy, Angela Manzo. Sometimes I'll call Mickey. Sometimes I'll call my husband. And he sends me my deposit from the next, you know, from the morning before, and then I don't feel so mad, you know. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I made some money. Okay. <laughs> it just, it just, it just depends on what the situation is. But I have multiple people that I talk to on a regular basis because I can't stop. So I've got to feel okay while I'm going. I got to make it work. How important are hotspots, the book reading, the conference calls, all aspects of our system, how important is that for you to keep on track? That's the first question. The second question is, do you ever feel burned out, and then how do you get over that burned out feeling? The hotspots, the reading the conference calls, I mean, it, it's all part of, to me, it's all part of getting your mind right. It's a 100% mental business. It's not hard physical work. None of it is. Not at all. Um, but mentally, there are ups and downs. So those things are the things that help to me. They help, they help stabilize me. They help get me excited when I, when I need some, some, a boost, when I need to remember, oh, yeah, I like this. I want to do this. What is my dream? Why am I doing this? You know, it, it, it helps remind me what's important and why I'm doing it. And then I'm able to help other people. And sometimes in order to help yourself, you've got to help somebody else. You know, so, I mean, I might feel like I'm having a bad week at, you know, 2000 or $2,500 in AP. That'll make me mad, you know. Maybe I talk to somebody at Hotspot who's never written a policy and who's struggling to sell one. Well, I feel a whole lot less mad at my 2500 at that point in time. Um, and it gives me perspective, but it allows me to help other people too, which helps me get my mind right because I'm constantly needing to get my mind right. And the more you're in the business and the longer, the longer you're around and you hear that, the more you realize what I mean when I say that. How important is your faith life to you with regard to this business? Faith, you said, Alex? Your faith life, your spiritual life, how important is that to you with regard to this business? Um, I would say it's, it's vital. It's really, really, really important. And I notice when I'm not as active in that, that I have more problems. Um, I have, you know, it's just like the last, not, not this past week, but the week before, you know, I had gone out with Noel the first week of May and done hotspots, so I didn't run business. So I was feeling a little bit crunched for time in terms of issuing enough, writing enough, issuing enough in three weeks as opposed to four weeks because I was, I was not home for an entire week. So I was still in crunch. And then the, the week after that, you know, I just, I, it was like slogging through mud. I was talking to so many people who couldn't remember why they had filled out a form and, didn't want anything to do with it and, you know, wouldn't talk to me. And I was just really struggling. Um, and it was hard. Gosh, it was hard because I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm failing even though I'm doing what I set out to do and I can't have control over everything, you know? And, um, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how things happen. It's like, you know, yesterday a whole bunch of stuff came together and it was like, I don't know. It felt very divine to me. 
Um, and, you know, it, it's nice to have God on your side. <laughs> it helps. Uh, that's probably the understatement of the century. Gosh, it's a, such a huge difference. You know, it's like all of a sudden I felt like a little bit of a weight had been lifted and I was so thankful. You know, I had people calling me back, agents calling me back who I hadn't heard from, people who I was supposed to contract and I hadn't heard from. All of a sudden they're calling me back. Hey, I'm so sorry this happened to me and this happened to me and this happened to me. And, you know, a client from a year ago who canceled her policy almost as soon as I had gotten it issued. She, she spent two hours at the bank trying to find who she needed to call to find me again. And then she called Foresters in Ontario, and they looked up the policy that she had canceled, found my number, and gave her my number. And she called me and said, hey, can we start again? I need this. Can you help me? I needed to find you. It took me a long time to found, find you, but I found you. Um, just a lot of really crazy, cool stuff happened. You know, an agent that I haven't talked to in several months had a serious tragedy go on. I didn't know she would do it, anything at all. And she just up and contacted me, told me that she, she took two buses and a train to get to the hot spot to listen to Michelle Allman dial so she could learn how to dial and how she finished reading Millionaire Maker Manual. I didn't know any of this stuff was going on. And here's the thing is that it was all in the works. It was all in the works. And it all came to fruition at the same time. Which was a major message to me right there. Like, you know, quit freaking out and lean on me. I got this. I'll take care of you. It's going to work out. You know, and it was like, boom, 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 boom. See, I told you, it works out. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, God, has a way major... of... God has a way of doing that, doesn't he? Um, I think he just makes you squirm for a little while until you realize that it's not all something that you can help and you can do and you can fix. It's not all about me. Oh, my gosh. You are so awesome. I need a little bit of church right now. And, and uh, preach it, Katrina. Preach it, white girl. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I, I've already imposed on your time. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, so much. You have no idea what this call has meant to my team and to me. And I appreciate you going out there serving on those hot spots. I was promoting you like crazy. I always talk about you like crazy, so it's uh, special to have you on our call. And um, thank you so much, Katrina. You rock. And uh, anything we can sure. do, you, just call on me. <laughs> come, come down and visit us in Orlando. I will. I promise you, I will. Because your call is so awesome, I will do that. And you're awesome. So thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, any anytime, need me anytime. Call me. Awesome. Okay, we are going to end it, but, uh, man, get out there, gang. I hope you're inspired by me. Take care. God bless.